Hello and welcome to 90 East. In this video, we're going to look at distance and displacement. So distance is something that you're probably familiar with already. It's how far something or someone has traveled and it's a scalar measurement. So it only has a size associated with it, a number. Say for example, this is your house. If a friend told you that they traveled two kilometers to get to your house, well, that would be the distance that they traveled. But what you don't know is what direction they came from. Did they come from the left or from the right? Who knows? Displacement, on the other hand, is a vector measurement. It tells you not only the distance that the person has traveled, but also the direction. So now your friend may say to you that they traveled two kilometers and that they traveled to the west to get to your house. But there's another aspect of displacement that we need to consider. And that is that displacement takes into account how far something's traveled in relation to where it started. That is, it measures the shortest distance between the origin and the destination. So not only do we have a magnitude and direction, but that magnitude is the shortest distance. Let's look at an example. This is your neighborhood. This is your house. This is your friend's house. Now your friend is new to the neighborhood. So when they come to visit you, at least for the very first time, they get a little lost. The route that they take is not the most direct route. You, on the other hand, when you go to visit your friend and you take your red car, you take the most direct route. You know your neighborhood well. What's really important to remember is that you're not necessarily taking the most direct route altogether, but you're taking the most direct route that you can using roads. When you're on your bike, however, and you're using the side paths between roads, you can take the most direct route. And that is the shortest route between your house and your friend's house. Let's look at how the distance and displacement compares between all three of these journeys. So here we've got the map again of our house and our friend's house. And we've got the three different journeys represented with the blue line representing your friend's journey, the red representing your journey in your car, and the yellow line representing your journey on the bike. Let's compare the distance first between all three of these journeys. What we know is that your friend traveled two kilometers to get to your house. We're also going to be told that you having taken a shorter route with your red car only had to travel one kilometer to get to your friend's house. Using your bike, however, you managed to reduce this distance to only 800 meters. Let's compare displacement now. We've got a compass here that will help us with estimating direction. We won't get 100% correct, but we're just doing this to look at the concept of displacement. If you'd like to make the most of this video, why don't you pause here, have a think about what you think the displacement would be for every journey, and join us again to see if you've got the same answer. Okay, now let's get started. We have to remember displacement has two components to it. The first is the magnitude. Now the origin and the destination are the same for all three journeys. They may have been swapped around depending on who was visiting who, but the magnitude measurement of displacement will be the same. It's the shortest distance between the two houses. Now we need to think about the direction. When your friend travels from their house to your house, they're going in a southwesterly direction. So their displacement is 800 meters southwest. You, on the other hand, are moving in a northeast direction to meet your friend. So your displacement in your red car and your yellow bike will be 800 meters northeast. There's one other aspect of displacement that we need to touch on, and that's the same with all vector quantities. If the origin and the destination are the same, the displacement will equal zero. What do we mean by this? Well, we know that every 365 days, well, 365 and a quarter days, the Earth orbits the Sun once. The distance that it needs to travel is really great. It's 940 million kilometers, but because it ends up at the exact same spot that it started at, the displacement of the Earth in those 365 and a quarter days is zero. Okay, so just to review for this video, distance is a scalar measurement, so it measures magnitude only. Displacement, on the other hand, is a vector measurement. It looks at magnitude and direction, and that magnitude is the shortest distance between the origin and the destination. And if the origin and the destination are exactly the same spot, displacement is equal to zero. 
We hope that you found this video useful. If you've got any questions, please directly message us through YouTube or send us an email to 9 to east tv at gmail.com. Thanks everyone.